Hello everyone. And in this lesson, we will recreate this sort of rendering effect, you know, like a render buckets effect in COPS. Okay, so in Houdini 21, so this will this is specifically for Houdini 21. Okay, because uh, in Houdini 21, they are now, they introduced a new node called scatter shapes. So that's the one that we're going to end up using. So I won't go through the whole thing, but I'll just sort of give you like a brief overview of what you can do with it. If you just type in scatter shapes, you'll get this node called scatter shapes. And it's pretty nice. Uh, you can do like a ton of stuff with this. By default, it has like an inbuilt star pattern. So you can just use that. You can do a whole bunch of things like you can, uh, you know, change the tile size. You have the option to vary the tile size. You know, so if you want it larger or smaller, you can uh, jitter position. And you can also like modify the angle. You know, so if I can just say, so I can like rotate the angle, I can also give them variation. And on the other side, you have color and blending. So if you give it some color, and then you have options here where you can say variance. So you can vary the hue. And, and you can vary the saturation and you can vary the value. Okay, so you have you have a whole bunch of stuff that you can do with this. Also, you have the option to uh, feed in whatever shape that you want. So if I just take an SDF shape and so I have a circle, right? Let's, let's just change this to a rectangle or a diamond will be fine. And I can just do uh, SDF to mono and just plug that in. So you'll get this. So whatever shape you want, you can like fit it, you can just plug it in there, like without any problems. So you can do that. We have uh, triangles, so you can have triangles. You can also plug in multiple shapes, which is very nice. So if I just do two of these, and uh, let's say this one will be a rectangle. So what become, what, this again is a new thing, is what they've done is they've added something called as a cable. So a cable is sort of like you can, merge multiple shapes together but internally it still it still treats each one separately and there's a crow outside and uh, then uh, within the stamp node it will just pick up the shapes sort of randomly or sequentially so what you can do is just take in something called cable pack and just plug in the two inputs in there and you plug in the stamp now by default, this is generating like RGBA. So we can keep it to RGB, it doesn't matter. So, but now you can see. So now you can see like it's sort of randomly, you know, modifying between these two. You can also give them color if you want, you know, so I can take a mono to RGB and each one can get a separate color. You know, so I can just take this and that, right? And what I can do is I can just take this and let's say this one will be blue, see. So it's actually taking that internal color as well. And let's make this uh, green. So what I can do is I can come in here and the red color that I had given, I can get rid of that. So now it's kind of using both of these. It's causing this issue because it's uh, taking it as an RGB. So it's kind of overlapping. If you do, if you make it an RGBA, like if, it's a, if it has an alpha channel, it will be better. Right now I'm not going to go through that, but uh, yeah, like if I make, it, make them small enough, it'll be fine. You know, like if I just make sure that they don't overlap. Yeah, see, there you go. So you can do stuff like this. So you have like a whole bunch of options that you can, you know, you can use and take care of. Anyways, what we are going to do is we're going to use this to create the rendering effect that we want. So uh, the one very nice thing about this is that you can also feed in a color map. Okay, so you have all these various maps in here. I will do another lesson on this because you can do a lot of stuff with it. But uh, you have these options where you can in you can add a density map, you can add a color map, you can add like all of these types of maps you can pick up. And uh, it's also pretty fast, right? Like this node is like if I start to scale this up, see, it like it it is really really fast. And as a last thing, just to show you, like if you come to color and blending. You can, you have stamp selection down here, so you can make it a uh, cycle. So now it will sort of go through, see it's doing like triangle, square, triangle, square, triangle, square. Or you can also do like layer select and then you can just pick which layer you want. So, you know, you can like limit the selection so you can do that. But yeah, like we'll keep it to random for now. And uh, yeah, so you can plug in like a color map if you want. Okay, so that is where things become interesting. So if let's say I delete this 
and what I can do is I have my uh, this is one of my renders right the alien render that I've done so I'll just duplicate this and I'll match the size with it so it's the same size as that so I'll just take this and plug it into size reference so this is now picking up the same size as this and then I can just take this and plug it into the color channel and there you go so now it's actually picking up the color from this image and if I like scale this up so you can see it starting to come in so we're going to use this and recreate our rendering effect okay so let me just get rid of the cable and everything from here and I'm going to keep this to rectangle and I'm going to this is this is pretty simple right I don't need to do any of these variation stuff or anything I'll keep this to uniform and I'm going to come to the scattering and we don't want any variation uh, let's keep this low yeah we also want to get rid of the angle variation so that will also be zero and just make it big enough that they overlap and you will get that that's the first step so we'll keep this so let's say we want to go from like a low pixelated resolution to like a slightly higher you can also go to the final image that's up to you this is not procedural like i couldn't figure out how to make it procedural but uh, if you want like two passes happening you can just you know copy paste and make two passes anyway so let's bring this down here to like uh, let's do like 30 okay so the low res is let's say 28 and then I want to do a high res so I'll just duplicate this so let's call this low res and let's call this high res and this will be uh, let's not make it too high I'll make it about I think 70 should be fine okay so we'll make it 70 or no let's keep it to 60 okay so this is good now what we want is we want these two to blend together right so we can just take a blend and I'll change both of these to RGB so this is the background and that is the foreground and all we want is like it should transition from this to that so the simplest way to do it is I can just take a ramp node and I can use a ramp for blending just take this and plug it into the mask and Make sure it's mono, like you don't want an RGB ramp. And let's bring this down here. And if I just animate this, right, so I can just take this and bring it all the way up here. Yeah, let's keep this to one. No wonder nothing was being seen. Okay, so we have this. And so it kind of will start here at this point. And then uh, it should just animate, right? So. I'll just animate the positions of both of these. So it goes from here to 48. Yeah, and maybe in the middle it should just stretch out a little. Yeah, so it's going horizontally right now. We can just change it to vertical. So you'll get like a vertical transition. But this looks terrible, right? This isn't what we want. So I can use this and create a black and white mask, uh, which is also using scatter shapes. So what I can do is I can take another scatter shape. This will also take in the same SDF shape. So I can just take this and plug it in there. And it will require the same thing, right? So this, the, this has to go in everywhere, right? So this, you do alt click and this comes into size reference because it has to match the size with it. And what we want to do is this will be mono right so we just take this and this is like this is mono and now we're going to use this ramp to control a couple of things so firstly let's just plug this into color so we'll have like you can see you know this passing through see so this itself is nice like if I plug this into my mask it will look better you know like it will be a little more interesting in terms of how the transition is happening but that's not good enough okay so what we also want to do is let's match the number of stamps between like the high res and the mask so i can just do a right click copy parameter and paste rate of reference but it also does one more thing which is very interesting is you can take this and plug it into density and it does that and this is where things become interesting so if you play this see you get a nice little you know transition happening you can just 
adjust it a bit more like we can take this and you know plug it all the way down what we can also do is like once it comes down here if you want the end to get completed we can just animate the value so i can just take this guy and we can just you know animate the value at the end like at this point like till here at zero and then in the end it should just come up to one there you go okay so what you'll get is see when it comes to the end it just becomes white so if you look at this this is a bit more interesting see you can get like a nice little pass happening through it and it goes to and it becomes high res and then because these things are linked if i just take this and make it higher see you'll get like see you get a nice little transition now the only thing i want with this on top of this is you want like brackets right you want like those rectangles that kind of go through so what we're going to do is we'll have to make a small change okay so let's take another ramp mono and uh, the only difference here is so this is vertical right so this will also be vertical and what we want is there will be three of these so we'll do this and we'll do like animate the position for all three yeah come to zero so alt click and alt click and alt click and then we come to the end and it sort of goes all the way to there like that okay so you'll get like this bar sort of going through and in the middle i can just stretch it out a little so it's sort of like this and i'm going to duplicate this so i'll do like control c control v and i'm going to replace this ramp with this guy okay so this goes into density here and into color and what we'll get is this see but these need to be rectangles right so what i'm going to do is this sdf to mono for the rectangle is what we'll change okay so i'll plug this in but i want to do a few things with this so firstly let's take an iso offset and make them smaller and then do an onion skin and make it like bigger see there you go so now you have like you know that going through and then once you have this i can come in here and do an invert so you know we're at that level and then also take like a remap and we can just sort of make them darker and that's pretty much it so now i can come in here and take another blend and this comes into background that goes into foreground and we'll set it to multiply and there you go so if you press play you get like you know nice little rectangles kind of going through the whole thing you can decide how much you want like i can make this a bit a little bit more smaller you know or like if it's zero then they just sort of overlap and they won't look very nice but you know it's also a resolution thing you know like this is like i don't know what the resolution is right now but yeah like when it gets too small if the brackets get too small like they don't really show up so we can also just come in here and like lower that see so now you can see like a bit more so we can do that and uh, yeah i think that's better there you go see so you get like you know nice little squares going through and if you wanted to transition to like the full image you can just plug in the full image right so we, i can just take this guy and plug this into the background which is my main transition and see so you'll get like the it transitioning to like the full image which is also fine so you can go with either or and then as i said like if you want this to go through two levels you just have to duplicate all of this right so and sadly because there's no time shift node you'll have to duplicate and then just sort of you know move the uh, animation ahead manually so you know that's work but this this i don't think there's any other way to do this at least you know i can't figure out so the nice thing about this one is that you know like because it's linked to this then whatever value you keep here is what you get you know so if i go really high so you'll get like you know really small boxes and if you go really low you'll get you know lesser or you'll get you'll get bigger boxes so yeah so the scatter shapes node is pretty useful 
And so the, the other thing is that you can also do this with an animation, right? So if you don't want to use an image, you can transition between like, you can render out footage, you know, and then you can just have a transition from like grayscale footage to like rendered footage. You can do stuff like that. So things that you were doing in, I don't know, like After Effects or whatever, you can do stuff like that here if you want. Anyways, that's pretty much it.